Good afternoon, grade 12s. Welcome to the session of mathematical literacy. This afternoon, I'm going to focus on data handling, or some people call it data handling, which we also call learning outcome number four. On data handling, I'm only going to focus on two things, the measures of central tendency and the measures of spread. Those are the only two things that I'm going to concentrate on this afternoon, measures of central tendency and the measures of spread. Let us first look at the measures of central tendency. Under the measures of central tendency, we have the mean, the median, and the mode. Under the measures of central tendency, we are going to look at the mean, the median, and the mode. I'm sure you've heard a lot about these three components of the measures of central tendency. The mean, the median, and the mode. What does the mean mean? What does the median mean and what does the mode mean? Or how do we calculate the mean, the median, and the mode? Let's first talk about the mean. The mean is determined by adding up all the values and dividing them by the number of values in the data set. We determine the mean by adding all the values in a data set and dividing it by the number of the values in the data set. Remember, the mean is sometimes referred to as the average. In a question paper, they can either say determine the average or determine the mean. For an example, if in a set of data you are given six values, to get the mean, it means you add up all the six values together and then you divide them by six. That is how you calculate or you determine the mean. The median is that value which divides the data set into two equal groups. If you have a data set, the value that divides the median into two equal groups, we call that value the median. It means the median will be in the middle of the data, dividing our data into two equal groups. But remember, for you to get the median, the values must first be arranged either in descending or ascending order. Before you can determine the median, the condition is that you first have to arrange your values. Sometimes you find your values that are not arranged. So if you find the median, you must first arrange your values in descending or ascending order. By descending, we mean from the highest to the lowest. And by ascending, we mean from the lowest to the highest. That is the condition. But remember, with the mean, you don't have to arrange the values. You only have to arrange the values when you calculate the median. Now the mode. The mode is the most frequently occurring value in the data set. If you are given a data set, the number that appears more than any other number in a data set, that number we call it the mode. Remember, sometimes in a data set you can have more than one mode. If there are two or more numbers appearing the same number of times in a data set, those two or three numbers can be referred to as the mode as well. So it doesn't mean that in a data set you can only have one mode. But there's another data set or other data sets where you can have more than one mode. Remember that in the shops and manufacturers, they often use the mode. It helps them to decide what to order or to make. Remember the mode is the number that appears most frequently. So when the shops decide what to order, they look at what is being bought most frequently by the consumers. And then what is bought most frequently by the consumers, then they have to buy or stock on that particular item. I'm sure you've heard the mean. We spoke about the mean. To get the mean, you add all the values together and divide by the number of values. The median, before you can calculate the median, remember, you must first arrange your data in descending or ascending order. And then the number in the middle will be our median or the number that will divide the data into two equal groups will be our median and the mode the mode is that value that appears most frequently in the data set and remember i said again you can have more than one mode in a data set now let's look at this example determine the mean median and mode for the following sets of data let me give you some few minutes. Remember, we have set one. For each set, you determine the mean, the median, and mode. Meaning, you look at set one, you determine the mean, median, and mode for set one, and you continue to set two, 
you determine the mean, the median, and the mode for the second set. I'll give you about five minutes to calculate the mean, the median, and the mode for each set that is presented before you. Okay, grade 12s, I hope you managed to calculate the mean, the median, and the mode for each set of data. Now, let's look at the solutions that I have. Looking at set 1, that was the data that was provided for set 1. The first thing that we calculate there will be the mean. Remember, we said the mean, you add all the data together and divide it by the number of data. If you count the data set, the number of data that you have in that data set, we have 11 values. So we add up all the 11 values and divide by 11. After adding the 11 values, you get the answer of 825. So that 825 we divide by 11 and we have our mean or the average as 11. The second thing, we have to calculate the median. Remember what I said to you grade 12s? Before you calculate the median, you must first arrange our data in descending or ascending order if it is not arranged. And if you look at the data for set 1, that data is not arranged. So the first thing before we calculate the median, or before we determine the median, we must first arrange our data. So I have arranged our data. So the smallest value in our data set for set 1 is 54, and the largest value is 11. Right? Then after arranging our data, remember you must count from left and from right equal spaces. If you count from left, we have from 54, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the sixth value, that's 75. And then again, let's count from the right. We have from 111, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the sixth value also stands on 75. That means 75 is our median. I'm sure you got that, grade 12s. And then let's also look at the mode. We said the mode is the number that appears most frequently or the value that appears most frequently. If you look at our data set, the only number that appears more than any other numbers is 75. So that means for this set of data, our mode is 75. The mean is 11, the median is 75, and the mode is 75 as well. That is for set 1. Let's look at set 2. That was the data provided for set 2. And again, the mean, we have added all the values that were given together, added them up together, and when you count the data that is provided there, we get 11 values. So we add up all the 11 values together and divide by 11. After adding all that data together, or the values together, we get 895. I'm sure you also got 895. That 895 we divide by 11, and it will give us the answer of 81.36. This answer is actually rounded off to two decimal places. Remember, Dr. Van Merva also taught you how to round off values. So we have used that skill of rounding to round this answer to two decimal places. So the answer for the mean will be 81.36. Now the median. Remember again grade 12s, if you look at this set 2, the data is not arranged. And we said one of the conditions of finding the median is to first arrange the data either from the lowest to the highest or from the highest to the lowest. So in this particular data, 
I have first arranged my data from the lowest value to the highest value. My lowest value in this set of data being 12 and my highest value being 183. Remember, I have 11 values. So the number in the middle or which will divide this set into two equal groups. Counting from left, beginning with 12, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the 6th value is 75. Now I'm going again counting from right, starting with 183. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and my 6th value also ends on 75. So for this set 2, which is a different set of data than set 1, my median as well is 75. And again, we're requested to find the mode. And if I look at this set of data that I'm provided, 75 is the only number that appears more than any other number in the data set that I'm provided with. So 75 will be my mode. So for set 2, the mean is 81.36, the median is 75, and the mode is also 75. Okay, grade 12. But note, when determining the median, if the data set is an odd number, remember odd numbers, grade 12? Odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on. Those numbers, remember, you are told that we call them odd numbers. So if your data set, when you're counting the numbers that you are having in a data set, and they give you an odd number, you are going to have only one number in the middle. Look at my example. If I count the numbers in this data set, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 values. And 11 is an odd number. So by virtue of having 11, it means I'm going to have only one number in the middle. And then 75 will be the number in the middle. So 75 in this case will be our median. Okay? But... If the data set is an even number, remember even numbers, grade 12s? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, those are even numbers. So if a data set that you are provided gives you an even number, you are going to have two numbers in the middle. Let's count the data that you are having or provided with. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have 12 values in this data set. And 12 is an even number. So remember, if you are having an even set of data, you are going to have two numbers in the middle. So the two numbers in the middle in this case will be 75 and 76. So once you have two numbers in the middle, you add those two numbers and divide them by 2. So in this case, we have 75 and 76. So we'll add 75 to 76 and then divide by 2. Then, in this particular instance, our median will be 75.5. Remember, grade 12s, this is very important. When you're writing formal assessment or the examination, when you are requested to calculate the median, first check if the data set that you are provided with is odd or even. If it is odd, you will definitely know that you must get one number in the middle. And if the data set that you are provided with is even, then you should also realize that you must have two numbers in the middle. This is very important when you are working on your formal assessment or the examination before you calculate the median. I hope that goes well with you. Okay. Apart from the measures of central tendency grade 12, I said I'm also going to talk to you about measures of spread. Under the measures of spread, we have the range, the quartiles, and the percentiles. Remember, under the measures of central tendency, we had the mean, the median, and the mode. Now, under the measures of spread, we have the range, the quartiles, and the percentiles. What do they mean, or how can we calculate the range, the quartiles, and the percentiles? Okay, let's first look at the range. The range is the difference between the highest and the lowest value in the data set. The range is the difference between the highest and the lowest values in the data set. 
And once you see the word difference in mathematical literacy, what comes into your mind is subtraction. Okay? So to calculate the range, the formula is range is equals to highest value minus lowest value. For an example, you are given that set of data, and if you look at that set of data, it is already arranged. So if you look at that set of data and you must calculate the range, so we need to substitute into that formula up there. Range is equals to highest value minus lowest value. So in this particular data set, the highest value is 183 minus the lowest value which is 12. And then our range will be 171. Remember, the range is the difference between the highest and the lowest value in the data set. Okay, grade 12s. Moving on to the quartiles. Remember, in the measures of central tendency, when we were calculating or when we were determining the median, we said the median divides our data into two equal parts or into two equal groups. Now, let's look at the quartiles. The quartiles divide the data set into four equal groups, each containing 25% of the data. Remember, Dr. Fanon Merve, when she was talking to you about fractions and percentages, she said the fraction a quarter, which is 1 over 4, it is in terms of percentages, it is 25%. Meaning, if you are having your whole data set and you divide it into quarters, it means you divide it into four equal groups. And then each quarter is 25%. I hope you got that right. And I'm sure it's not for the first time, grade 12, that you hear about quartiles. All right. In the quarters, we have what you call the lower quartile or Q1. Q1 has 25% of the data. Okay? And then again, we have what you call middle quartile or Q2. But once you have already calculated the median, you already have Q2. So Q2 is where you find 50% of the data. Meaning Q2, just like the median, it divides our data into two equal groups. In the examination, especially the final examination, if they have requested you to calculate the median, they do not ask you to calculate Q2. I'm sure you are aware of that, uh, grade 12s. In most question papers, they do not ask you to calculate Q2. Because if you have calculated the median, you already have Q2. That is why they do not ask you to calculate Q2. Because Q2 is our median. Okay? And lastly, we have our upper quartile, or Q3. So Q3, that's where we find 75% of the data. Q1, we find 25% of the data. Q2, or the median, we find 50% of the data. And Q3, that's where we find 75% of the data. Let me just illustrate what I have spoken to you about in terms of the quartiles. Let's look at that. Let's assume that that is a loaf of bread. Okay? So, if you look at that, if you look at Q1, where Q1 is situated, below Q1, that will be the first group. And in that first group, that's where you find 25% of the data. Okay? And then, let's look at the median or Q2. Remember, the second group is between Q1 and Q2. But below Q2, that's where you find 50%. Because under Q2, you have group 1 and group 2. And remember, grade 12s, each group has 25% of the data. So group 1 has 25, group 2 has 25, and both of them lie below Q2. That is why we say Q2, under Q2 you have 50% of the data. Okay? Now let's look at where uh, Q3 or quartile 3 is situated. Under quartile 3, you find three groups. Group 1, group 2, and group 3. Remember, each group has 25% of the data. Ne? That is why we say under quartile 3 or Q3, that's where you find 75% of the data. 
because it's 25, 25, and 25, which is 75. I'm sure this illustration makes sense. And then the last group as well will be 25% of the data because we said quartiles divide our data into four equal groups. And each group will have 25% of the data. I'm sure that is right, grade 12. All right. Under the quartiles, we also have what you call interquartile range or IQR. Interquartile range or IQR. The interquartile range is the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile values in a data set. Remember again, grade 12, I said in mathematical literacy, once you hear the word difference, what should come into your mind will be subtraction. So the interquartile range or IQR is equal to the upper quartile or Q3. Remember, we call it upper quartile or Q3 minus lower quartile or Q1. Remember, it's either lower quartile or Q1. So IQR, which is interquartile range, is equal to Q3 minus Q1. So it's still uh, working the same way as the range. It's only that this one, we concentrate on the quartiles. Okay? Now, lastly, we have the percentiles, grade 12. Remember we said the quartiles divide our data into four equal groups. Now with the percentiles, the percentiles divide the data into 100 or more equal groupings. Remember, once you hear the word quartiles, you think of quarters. And once you hear the word percentiles, you think of percentage. So percentiles divide the data into 100 or more equal groupings. If I may have to illustrate that, grade 12, let's look at that. We said Q1, and if you look at Q1, that is where you find also the 25th percentile. And under the 25th percentile, look, I've illustrated with white. Under the 25th percentile, that's where you find 25% of the data. Below the 25th percentile lies 25% of the data. Okay? Let's look at the 50th percentile, just below Q2. So once you have Q2, you already have the 50th percentile. So below the 50th percentile, I've marked that with black. Below the 50th percentile, that's where you find 50% of the data. Okay? And then the 71st percentile. If you have Q3, you already have the 71st percentile. And below the 71st percentile marker, I've Mark that with red. Below the 75th percentile, that is where you find 75% of the data. And then 100% of the data, which I've marked with purple, is our whole set of data. The whole set of data contributes 100%. 25th percentile contributes 25% of the data. The 50th percentile has 50% of the data. The 74th percentile has 75% of the data. I'm sure this diagram, uh, grade 12, is actually illustrating what I am talking to you about. I hope it will make things make sense in terms of percentiles. I'm sure you got that right, uh, grade 12. Okay, moving on. Now we have a question. It says, determine the quartiles, meaning Q1, Q2, remember Q2 is also the median, and Q3, and the interquartile range for the following sets of data. You have set 1 and you have set 2. So for each set of data, you must determine Q1, Q2, and Q3, and also determine the interquartile range for each set of data. I'll give you again a few minutes for you to work on these 
calculating the Q1, Q2, and Q3, and also the interquartile range. And then after that, we can look at the solutions. Okay, grade 12s, let us look at your answers. All right. It's still the same question. Determine the quartiles, Q1, Q2, which is also the median, remember, and Q3, and the interquartile range for each of the following sets of data. Let's start with set 1. Okay. For set 1, grade 12s, Look at that set of data. If you look at that set of data for set 1, you can see that that data is not arranged. And again, you cannot determine Q1 before you determine Q2 or the median. So you must first determine the median or Q2 before you can determine Q1. Remember in a shop, when they divide a loaf of bread, they first divide the loaf into two halves. And then the first half, they also divide into two. And then the second half, they also divide into two. So even here in mathematical literacy, before we can calculate or determine Q1, we first have to determine Q2 or the median. Remember I said, when you determine the median, you first have to arrange your data, either from the smallest to the highest or the other way around. In this particular instance, let's first arrange our data from the smallest to the highest. The smallest value in that data set will be 50, followed by 55, 59, 60, 72, 75, another 75, 78, 87, 99, and then lastly, 111. Let's count how many numbers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Remember again, grade 12s, I said, after you arrange your data, you must also determine whether your data is odd or even before you calculate the median so that you can know whether to expect the one value in the middle or two. And in this case, we cal you counted that we have 11 values. That means we are going to have only one number in the middle. Okay? Let's first now find the median or Q2. Counting from left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? And now counting from right, 
one, two, three, four, five, six as well. So we have one number in the middle, which is 75. That means 75 is our Q2 or it is our median. Okay? I hope you followed. Right. Now that we have divided our data into two equal groups, meaning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our data is arranged into two equal groups. Then we can look at this first group. That's where we will find Q1. Let's find Q1. Remember we have how many numbers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 5 is an odd number. That means in the middle of this uh, first group of data, you will also have one number in the middle. So it will be 1, 2, 3. And then 1, 2, 3. That means 59 in this case is our Q1. Now, for determining Q3, let's move to the second half of our data. In that second half of our data, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 values. Because 5 is an odd number, it means we are going to have one number in the middle. Let's see. 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3. That means 87 is our Q3. 59 is our Q1. 75 is our median or Q2. And then 87 is our Q3. I hope you also have those answers, grade 12s. Yes, you got them right if you have 59, 75, and 87. Remember, apart from determining Q1, Q2, and Q3, we also had to calculate the interquartile range. Still for set 1. Remember I said interquartile range, which is IQR, is equals to Q3 minus Q1. Now that we have determined Q3, we simply substitute Q3 by uh -huh, 87. Somebody said 87. And then minus, we substitute our Q1 by, that's correct. 59. And then 87 minus 59 will give us an answer of 28. If you want to check that on the calculator, we can quickly do that. 312s. Okay. Let's switch it on. 87 minus 59 will give us an answer of 28. Meaning our interquartile range is 28 for set 1. I'm sure you got all of them right. Now let's look at set 2. Okay. If you look at the data on set 2, grade 12s, you'll also realize that our data is also not arranged. And remember again, I'll remind you and keep on reminding you, we have to first determine the median or Q2 before you can find Q1 and Q3. And again, remember, I said before you can determine the median, you first have to arrange your data. Now, let's arrange this data quickly. The first value there, which is the lowest value for set 2, is 12. And then 15, 27. 30, 75, another 75, and then 78, 111, 142, 147, and the last value, 183. Now that we have arranged our data, then we can find the median. But remember again, I said before you can find the median, you first have to check whether your data is odd or median. Let's check. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And 11 is an odd number. That means we are only going to have one value in the middle. Let's check our median then. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The sixth value is 75. Counting from right again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The sixth value again counting from right is also 75. That means in this case, 75 again is our Q2 or the median. Okay. Now that we have divided our data into two equal groups, we can find now Q1. Remember, Q1, we look for it from the first group. Let's check again how many values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 is odd. It means again we are going to have only one value in the middle. Okay? 1, 2, 3. The third value is 27. And then 1, 2, 3. The third value again is 27, meaning 27 is our Q1. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you got that right, grade 12s. Now, let's look at the second part of our data, the second half. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 values. It means yet again, when we determine Q3, we are only going to have one number in the middle. It's 1, 2, 3, the third value. Is there and then again one two three the third value again is 42 meaning that 42 is our q3 okay 27 it's q1 75 is q2 or the median and 42 is q3 okay great terms I hope you also again found Q1 as 27, Q2 as 75, and Q3 as 142. Remember, they said for this set again, we must calculate the interquartile range, which is our IQR. Remember, we said IQR is equal to Q3, which is the upper quartile, minus Q1, which is the lower quartile. Now that you have determined Q3, we substitute it by 142 because we said Q3 is 142 minus the Q1. We said Q1 is 27. Now 142 minus 27 will give us an answer of 115. Let's again check that answer grade 12s. Okay, 142 minus 27 is equal to 115. So our interquartile range for set 2 is 115. Can have a look at that. I'm sure you all got it right. And I'm sure... You have already remembered this from what your teachers have already taught you about how to determine Q1 and Q3. And yet again, remember grade 12, I said Q2 is the median. Once you have already determined the median, you automatically have Q2. That is why in the question papers, you are never requested to determine Q2. Because if they ask you to determine the median, already you have determined Q2. Okay, let me also give you another question. This other question is now based on percentiles. Because remember, we also spoke of percentiles. Okay. Uh, with regard to percentiles, grade 12, the question says, Malaria is caused by a parasite which is transmitted by mosquitoes in many tropical and subtropical regions. Let me repeat that statement. Malaria is caused by a parasite which is transmitted by mosquitoes in many tropical and subtropical regions. The number of cases of malaria reported in South Africa 
during each of the past 20 years are shown from lowest to highest. The number of cases of malaria reported in South Africa during each of the past 20 years are shown from lowest to highest. Okay, that is our data, the number of malaria cases reported for 20 years. Okay, so our data is also arranged from lowest to highest. Okay, grade 12s, look at that data and then answer these two questions. The first question, 2.1, which value is at the 24th percentile? 2.1. Which value is at the 24th percentile? And then 2.2. At what percentile is the value 28,000? At what percentile is the value 28,000? I'm sure you can see 28,000 in our data set. And remember, our data set is arranged from lowest to highest. So at what percentile is the value 28,000? I'll give you just a few minutes. It's only two questions, grade 12. I'll give you just a few minutes to look at this and try to find the answer. And then we can see how we will be able to calculate those answers. Okay, grade 12, I hope it wasn't difficult for you to do those two questions. All right, let's look at 2.1. Okay. 2.1, it says, which value is at the 24th percentile? Remember, we have how many values? If you count those values that we have, we have 20 values. It means we must look for 25% of 20 values all right now calculating that as 25 over 100 multiply by 20 which will give us an answer of we can check that in our calculators 25 divided by 100 multiply by 20 will give us 5 the answer here is 5. This 5 gives us the position. It means the value in the 21st percentile is position number 5 in the data set. Let's do, go and look at the first value in our data set. Remembering that our data set is already arranged from lowest to highest. So the first value in our data set, that value will be on the 21st percentile. What value is that? Let's go and check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is our fifth value. It means 5,000. That is the value. 5,000 is at the 21st percentile. Okay, great terms. Remember, when you calculate that, you are only looking for the position. So we find that the value on the 25th percentile is the first value in our data set. 
and we go back to our data set and find out which value is that. So going back, the first value in our data set is 5,000, meaning that the 25th percentile is at value to uh, 5,000. Pardon with that. So 5,000 is at the 25th percentile on our data set. Okay? Now, let's look at 2.2. 2.2 says, at what percentile is the value 28,000? At what percentile is the value 28,000? Remember, grade 12s, if you count our data set, we have 20 values. And if you look at the value 28,000, if I may go back. Okay, grade 12s, let's look at the position of 28,000. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So it's the uh, 18th value out of 20 values. Now, if you're looking for that percentile, we'll say the 18th value out of 20 values multiply by 100. Okay? Let's check that. Eighteen divided by twenty multiply by one hundred gives us ninety, which is ninety percent. That means twenty eight thousand is at the ninetieth. 90th person tile. Okay, great 12s. 28,000, remember, is value number 18 of 20 values. So, eight, value 18 of 20 values multiplied by 100 gives us 90%. That means 28,000 is at the 90th person tile. Okay, I'm sure you got that right, great 12s. All right? That was the last thing that I have for you this afternoon. Remember, grade 12s, when you write your final examination or even your formal assessment, data handling, most especially measures of central tendency, remember measures of central tendency, I mean mean, median, and mode, and measures of spread, I mean the range, the quotas, and the percentiles, can appear in both paper 1 and paper 2. And that is all I have for you this afternoon. Thank you very much. Goodbye.